All right, today we're gonna to be covering how to use a basic spray gun, and these will be air spray guns. We'll use both the gravity feed and the suction or siphon feed gun so you can understand how both work. For more information on pressure pots or pressure fed spray guns, you can watch our tutorial on how to use a paint pressure pot. A couple things with the spray gun, you wanna make sure you choose the right gun. Uh, HVL, conventional, these come in HVLP, or if you want a suction gun, you get those in conventional. We'll show you a little bit about how they both spray, and we'll go over how to use them properly so you can get a good finish on your project. So our first tip with the spray gun, you have to make sure your material is either thin enough or you're using a big enough fluid nozzle or you're using a system like a D-cup system that allows the material to actually be pulled down. In general, with gravity, the material has to be able to flow on its own. So with a thicker material, you often won't get it to flow well without thinning it pretty significantly. That makes gravity not as well suited for thicker paints as well. But say you needed to spray the paint, it needs to be able to flow on its own when you pull the trigger. In this case, the material I'm using is pretty similar to a latex. So as you see, I'm barely getting any flow. That will end up ultimately resulting in me not being able to use this paint very well when I'm spraying it or potentially not spraying at all. We'll actually show you the larger tip. This is a 1.4 millimeter tip. We will switch to the larger tip so you can see if that'll make a difference. This is something you may need to do with your particular material if you're not familiar with it before you use it. So we'll switch to the bigger tip. If that still doesn't work, we're gonna thin this material. Being HVLP, we'll most likely need to thin the material anyway. As a general rule, if you wanted, you can buy a Zon 2 cup. There are some ones that are relatively inexpensive. And for HVLP, we could test it with the cup. We're looking for about a 20 to 30 second uh, runtime in the Zon cup. You can also refer to our video on using Zon cups to measure viscosity. So I'll show you what a 1.8 looks like and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so we switched to the 1.8 nozzle. Most gravity guns, that might be the largest you can get. Some do go up to a 2.2 or 2.6, but as you can see, it's still a little bit sluggish. We're not getting material flowing. So for the most part, this material isn't going to spray without thinning. When it comes to thinning, we want to start thinning at the smallest amount we can and gradually increase so that we don't get our paint overly thin and have issues with runs or controlling how it flows. So I'll go ahead and add about 5 or 10% thinner to this. In this case, this is a water base. So we'll, water, we'll use water and we'll, we'll get it to flow. And I'll let you know how much that is. And then we can show you how to spray from there. All right, so we added a little thinner. At this point, we're at about, well, it is actually a good amount thinner. We're at about 20%, and you can see I have a nice even stream. When it's at that point, we, get a, we should be able to spray this material relatively well. We checked it in the zone. Again, it's in that 20, 30 second range, so that means we should be able to get good results with this, being HVLP. We'll show you how to spray it now so you can get a general idea of how to use the gun. So once we know our material is thin enough to flow out of the gun, the next thing we need to do is adjust how much air we put into the paint. Air into the paint is what gives you atomization or the breakup of paint. And there's kind of different levels of finish that people tend to refer to. The highest level of finish that most people are familiar with is an automotive or car finish. That's a very smooth glass-like appearance that you see with a car. Being that this is a latex type paint, we may be applying it to a wood or something similar we're not gonna be able to get quite that level of a breakup typically. You can with enough pressure or in a conventional gun or a pressure fed system, but with gravity we might be limited a little bit. What we'll wanna do is start adjusting the air. And the goal is to use as little air to break, properly break up the paint as possible. The more air we use, the more paint we waste. In particular, this gun being HVLP suggests that if you use more than 25 or 24 pounds, at the base of the gun, you could be wasting the paint, a lot more paint, and not be getting the efficiency that an HVLP gun is supposed to give you. Any HVLP gun will list how many pounds you can use the gun with and still get the transfer efficiency that it suggests. Obviously, if you can't get the paint to break up, you can go higher than that. Just recognize you might not get quite the paint savings that you would otherwise. So to start, I'll start with 10 pounds of pressure. As you can see, the way this is laying out, there's coarse pebbles. This won't even be considered an industrial finish. Ultimately, this isn't really gonna give you an acceptable finish. You wouldn't wanna have a product turn out that way. 
So we still need to increase the, the air pressure. So I'll increase it. You usually want to read the air pressure with the gun triggered because that's actually how much air is being given to the gun, not, when, not the pressure that's read when the gun's not triggered. So I'm about 22 pounds, right about where I should be for max, the maximum that this gun should use with still being HVLP. Now you can see that actually looks pretty good. The breakup's pretty fine. That would be a, at the very least a very high quality industrial finish, even borderline on an automotive type finish. When you use the gun, a couple of key things. You want to remain perpendicular to the surface and you want to be six to eight inches away from that surface. So roughly about a hand's length. You want to move back and forth evenly. And at a relatively consistent pace. And you can see some, if you don't do that, you'll obviously, you can get differences in how much paint you're applying. The other thing you want to do is try to overlap each pass by about 50%. You can see my material's running a little bit. We did thin this more than we really should, given this particular material. And that's kind of one of the limitations of HVLP. You can't always spray the material without thinning it pretty, pretty heavily. The other thing you can do is trigger the gun on and off at the end of the product. That helps you waste less paint. Each time you come to the end and hold that trigger, you're, you're actually spraying a little more than you need to of paint that's being wasted. You can see down here we don't have the runs as much. I did make it a point to move a little quicker and to only do one pass. So if you notice runs, that means you're either holding, you either have too large of a tip or your material's too thin or you're not moving too fast or you're moving too slow. So that's how you remedy a run is you either move quicker and or change the way the gun set up or the how much that you've thinned the paint. Now obviously if you already thinned the paint you're gonna have to either adjust the nozzle and see if it still flows or move change the way you spray. But for the most part that's how you spray. We'll do a couple more tests to, or passes just to show you. And so we know we're getting a good finish. We got it covered. Down here we don't have the runs, so that's what we do for the remainder of our product. And we keep perpendicular. We keep about six to eight inches away and move in uh, at a consistent pace. So that's how you properly use a spray gun. This is gravity feed. We'll move on to a suction fed spray gun. All right, so. Now we'll cover how to use a siphon fed spray gun. The main thing with it, much like the gravity gun material, has to be relatively thin to be able to use a siphon fed spray gun. Uh, we added about 35, 40% thinner to this material and it's running about 20 seconds and is on too. So if you have thing, any coating that's about a latex consistency, you probably are gonna have a hard time using a siphon fed gun. To make sure it will work, you wanna see if the cap says S on it. You can use an S or any cap with an S signifier on it would say it's a siphon fed spray gun, which means we can use it that way. The tips are going to be bigger. The smallest you can usually use on a siphon fed gun is about a 1.6, but you'll often need at least a 1.8 is a very common siphon fed tip, or even up to like a 2.0 or higher so that you can pull material, uh, air across the top of the material and out the tip of the gun, as that's how these kind of guns work. You can't use HVLP really with siphon fed. There are some guns out there that will label them as HVLP, but in general, it, it doesn't really work that well. You, the way we control the materials with the tip size, which we have a little more limits on, and then we also have the ability to control it with the air pressure at the wall. We also didn't cover this in the last gun, but you have your air control on the top, so your shaping air control, and then your fluid needle. In general, as you, you start with these wide open, and then if you need to, you can cheat these down if you're dealing with small areas or touch-ups. And we'll kind of show you those 
those aspects of the gun as we do this here. We slowly, slowly start increasing air pressure until we get enough material coming out that we're satisfied with what we're getting. I'll start around 10 pounds so you can see that for the most part we're really not going to even get material at 10 pounds. So I'm not getting anything and then I'll keep increasing. And as you see, as I increase pressure, I'm up to 30 pounds, I get more material. The nice thing is for siphon feed, for the most part, if it flows out and will spray, you know you're getting decent breakup because it takes a lot of air pressure and volume just to get the material to come out. Same principles apply. We want to stay about six to eight inches away from the surface. A little further with conventional sometimes is always an, is an okay idea. And we want to stay as perpendicular as possible. Now say I wanted to get into a small area or I needed to control, reduce the fluid a little. I can cheat in my needle, which is the bottom, and then my air on top. And I also have uh, control at the trigger where I can, can taper, the, taper the pool so I get more or less material. So you could use any one of those techniques to control how much material you're getting. So for example, that's a very light pull, and then I can open it up fully and get a little more material. Same with the pattern itself, I can open it back up and go from a full couple inches, or if I barely pull, I barely get any material. So those are all the ways you can control, whether it's a siphon feed or a pressure or a gravity feed, these are all the fine tuning options that you have. And as you see, as I paint, the principle would be the same, making passes and overlapping roughly 20 to 40, even 50%. So we'll show you that now. I'm 68 inches away. As you see, the goal would be to get the product covered. If you have a certain spec of material that you're supposed to put on the surface, you would then check it with a wet mill gauge. We do have a video on that as well, so you can learn how to do that properly. Uh, links to both those are below. And that's generally how you use a spray gun, whether it's conventional siphon feed or an HVLP gravity gun.